Welcome back everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another, another amazing geometry node, and this time we're covering things like potions, cauldrons, and water ripples. So it is an all-in-one geometry node, fantastic value, and the links of course will be down below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And if you want to get this for free, as well as all of our other geometry nodes, all of our courses, then please check out our Patreon. And enough of all that, let's get right into it then. So as you saw on the introduction, we are going to be covering cauldrons, we're going to be covering potions, and the actual water ripple. And these things, of course, can be used in many, many different ways as well. Really easy to use. So the first of all, what I'm going to show you is just how um, this is actually set up. So when you actually download the geometry node, this is actually what you get. If I just press Alt H, bring back my ball, you'll see that we've got a cauldron set up as an example, a potion set up as an example, and the water ripples also set up an example. So it's easy for you to just actually use it. The other thing is on the right hand side, you can see everything is named all in its own actual collection. So again, really easy to use. And finally, you can see that we've got all of these, if I put this onto material mode, all of these materials, including the cauldron materials, the potion materials, the bubbles, the ripples, and of course the actual smoke. So it's basically just pick your material, drop it in the geometry node, and that's it, away you go. It's really, really that easy. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is just move this over to the left hand side and show you how easy this is to use. So let's first of all bring in a plane. So all I'm going to do is bring in a mesh, a plane. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And as you should always do, reset all of the transforms like so. Now what I'm going to do is just pull this up a little bit. I'm going to add in the modifier. So geometry node, bring it down, potion, geometry node. Now you will notice when I put the material on, there is no material at the moment. But this is the actual geometry node. So we've got all of these options within here. We've got surface bubbles. We've got bubbles on the inside, like the potion you saw. We've got smoke, and we have waves. So let's go through them one by one. We've made this as easy as you, uh, to use as possible. So the first thing I want to do then is add in the material. I think what I'll do for this one is I'll pick my green. So I'm going to go with green. Let's go with uh, green uh, cauldron. So we'll go, in fact, you know what? We'll go with green potion, like so. And you can see at the moment, if I press the space bar, it's actually wobbling, but in a really weird way. And that is because we've not increased these subdivisions. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can either increase them on the geometry node. So I can put it on five like so. And now you'll see if I put this on object mode, there we are, we've got that ripple effect. Or instead of doing that, you can put this one back to one. And what we'll do instead is press tab, right click, subdivide, subdivide. If you can't see it, just actually put it on here. Subdivide, subdivide subdivide like so and you will get now the same actual effect as you can see all right so moving on then we can actually change the displacement we can make it much much higher much much uh, more rigid or much more flowing like so so i'm going to put this actual back to 0 0.1 something like that i think that's absolutely fine the other thing is now you will see that the material's on there and it's all waving away okay so that's that part now what i'm going to do is i'm also going to tell you why this uh, selection needs ticking on because not only can you um, turn it on so it affects the whole of your mesh you can also have it so it's only affecting part of your mesh as well but i'm going to show you that in just one second so first of all now we also want some surface bubbles on so let's tick these on like so let's give them a material um, so what i'll do is i'll go with green and we'll go with um, green bubbles let's go with green bubbles like so and you can see at the moment there's a lot in here. So let's come down and first of all, turn the density down something like one. And now you can see that's looking much better. Let's also turn the scale up just a slight bit. So let's turn it up something like there. And then what we can also do is we can either delete them near the edge. So you can have them popping out of the edge if you want to, or you can actually delete them near the edge and then increase the distance to the edge or how far we'd actually delete them from the edge like so, all within the actual geometry node. And you can see you can get exactly what you actually want. All right, so that's the surface bubbles. It's as simple as that. Everything is pretty much set out how you need them. 
Now moving on, let's actually come then to the bubbles on the inside. Now to obviously see the bubbles on the inside, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. I'm going to hide my geometry node with this button. I'm going to press the tab button. And then all I'm going to do now is just grab the whole thing. I'm going to press E, pull it down like so. And then I'm just going to give it some actual um, loop cuts in the center like so. Now, if I come on now and just tick this on, you will see that the whole thing now is rippling and we don't really want that. And that then brings me back to why this selection is here. So instead of using selection, what we can actually do is we can come in, press the tab button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these going all the way around here. So Alt Shift click, Alt Shift click, Alt Shift click, right click, let's mark a seam. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and press the L button just to select all of those. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just make a vertex group with these and we'll call it top like so. Press the end button and then click assign. So we want to assign just these ones that are lit up like so. And now I can go back to my geometry node, press the tab button. And then all I'm going to do is click on this little flag here, click selection, click top. And there we go. Now you can see what's happening is it's only affecting the top of my actual mesh. So this makes it really easy if you actually want a potion and you want it bubbling on top as well. You can do all of that at the same time. Now let's think about our bubbles. So if I come in, just put this on wireframe. At the moment, you can't see any bubbles in there. And that's simply because we've not got them ticked on. So first of all, let's come in and tick them on. And then you'll see after a little bit of time, you actually have bubbles in there. Now from here, what you can do is you can actually change the direction of how the bubbles are going to go. So you can see now if I put it this way, you'll see them now starting to change direction, which makes this really, really great for potions. You know, when you're setting them on the side and things like that, you can actually change the direction. I'm going to put mine up pretty much straight. So let's straighten it out like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, uh, so I can bring the scale down like you see, or I can bring it up like so. I can also then as well bring the density all the way down if I wanted to. And the other thing I can do is I can change the speed of how fast these things are moving up and down. And you will notice that as this changes, if I put this back on, you will see that this also changes on the top because these two are actually tied together. So the faster this uh, is rippling, the faster the bubbles go and the faster the actual top of these uh, bubbles coming out goes as well. So I'm going to turn this down slightly. And then what I'm going to show you is now, let's actually look at the inside. So if I put this on, now you can see your bubbles in there. Put it on rendered view. We can just, just make out our bubbles in there now when you let it actually load up. And that is what you want. Of course, you can go in and change the materials to your heart's desire. Make them glow a little bit and things like that if you want to. All right, so now moving on then. So let's now come on to our actual smoke. So what I'm going to do, I've done the surface bubbles, I've done the bubbles, let's come to our smoke. Now at the moment this is not enabled, let's enable it. And there we go, we've got our smoke there. Let's also then bring in a material. And all you want to do for this is just find a fog that you want. So I'm going to obviously pick the green fog. So let's pick the green fog, like so. And straight away now, you'll see we've actually got smoke actually coming off them. Now we have got an option here of rotating the smoke towards the camera like so, or turning it off, which is really, really handy when you've got a camera there. Because these are flat side, we didn't want to actually add too much topology on them. And so now you can see we've got a really, really nice effect with them. The other thing we can do with it, of course, is turn up the height. So let's put the height on something like, I don't know, 3.5 or something. And now you'll see the actual start to really, really go much, much higher, as you can see. So you can have them as high as you want. You can also change the speed as well. So let's change the speed up something like this. It does take a little bit of time, but now you can see that we've got a really, really high actually amount of smoke. So you can see as well, even with the smoke, there's tons and tons of actual options to do or get out of it, whatever you want to get out of it. We can also as well change the density. So let's make that smoke really, really thick now. Let's increase it like so. And it's as simple as that. All right. So finally then, finally then, we've got our actual waves. So what I'm going to do now for the waves is I'm going to actually, in fact, you know what, I'll just turn off my smoke just for now, just so you can see it a little bit easier. And then what we'll do is we'll actually change the material now. So we've got at the moment green potion. As I said, we've got a potion for cauldrons. We've got a potion for, uh, you know, the potions and the ripples as well. So let's come in and change this. Generally, you won't want a uh, cauldron 
um, where you're going to see the bubbles underneath. You will want a potion ball, however, where you're going to see the bubbles, but you're not going to see the ripple on top, so we've split them up. So what we're going to do is just change the material, and we're going to put it on green. Uh, green ripples green, like so. And then what I'm going to do is grab my spoon from over here. I'm going to pull it over then, and then let's make it a little bit bigger. Put it in place, like so. Let's also spin it round, so RZ, spin it round, like so. All right, so let's come back to this. Now we've to, uh, turn off our smoke, let's put this up. Let's uh, open up our ripples, so waves. Let's click enabled and let's put it on the ID. Now, what is the ID? Well, first of all, you'll notice that this uh, spoon here is put in ripple meshes. Whether that be a cube, a sphere, it doesn't really matter as I'll show you. Just make sure you put in a collection and then once you've got the collection, it, can, it doesn't even have to go in this collection and go in any of your own collections. Come on over here. And just go to ripple meshes and let's also just make sure that our plane which is this one there isn't in there as well so in other words this is not in there all right so now you can see you've actually got ripples if i press spacebar you can see we can now in increase the speed of these we can increase the intensity of these like so and have them exactly the way we want and now also if i grab my spoon and move it you will see that as i move around those ripples actually move with the actual mesh. If I drop this here as well, bring in, let's say we'll bring in something like a, let's bring an icosphere in. And then what we'll do is we'll move that up. So I'll just pause the actual animation and you can see straight away now, we can also have that in there as well. So really, really handy, really, really easy to use. Now, the last thing that I want to tell you is how do you bring this? into another project basically all you're going to do is you're going to grab anything and i mean anything so if i come in and let's pause it let's bring in a cube so mesh cube bring it here and then all i'm going to do now is just add on the geometry node and then just bring in the potion geometry node and now you can see it's on there all i'm going to do then is open a new blend file so let's open a new blend file so here we are in our new blend file i'm going to go back to the original blend file I'm going to press Control C on my cube, come back, press Control V, and there we go. Now everything is in here. Now, the only thing that won't be in here is all of the materials and things like that. I'll just bring in the material that is being uh, used on the geometry node. To sort that out, all you need to do, you just want to come in, grab all of these materials, Control C, go back to the actual blend file, press Control V, and then you've got all the materials in there as well. So now you can actually come in and use it in any of your other projects. As simple as that to use. All right, everyone. So a bit of a long one to explain all this. It's quite a complex thing getting all these things together. But if you really, really enjoy this one, check out our other geometry nodes. I think we have 25 plus geometry nodes now. And as I said, perhaps, uh, I don't know, 700 hours of content worth of courses and things like that and again if you want to get all that stuff for free and support us along the way then check out our patreon all right everyone so happy modeling see you on the next one cheers